Hey fam, welcome to the kitchen. Today I'm gonna to answer all of your questions about early feeding Sophia when she was a baby. And we're gonna make glamorous, beautiful Duchess potatoes. And Sophia's gonna try some too. So we're making pretty Duchess potatoes. They're very glamorous. So I'm gonna answer some questions while I peel these potatoes and cut them up. And then we're gonna boil them. One of the questions that you guys asked me a lot was, how did you get Sophia to like such a variety of foods? Um, from such a young age. So the best thing that I did was I actually introduced, starting at five months, I introduced different purees. I did one at a time just to make sure she wasn't allergic to anything. And I gave them often. So I would give her an avocado puree for the first time. And that week I would give it to her about three or four times to introduce it, to make sure she would get used to the flavor and the texture. Um, and then I would keep giving it periodically to make sure she didn't develop an al allergy. The other thing that I did when she started solid, like finger foods, that was around six months. So I would give her purees and solid foods because she couldn't really pick them up yet or chew them, but I wanted to start introducing them. So I would give her little blueberries cut up or little peas. I would do again one food one at a time to make sure that she wasn't allergic. And then I would give it to her several times that same week just to get her used to it. And I think that really helped. Uh, so that's kind of what I did. And I just used a variety of things. So the things that I thought would be good were soft foods, little finger foods that were soft, so it was things like blueberries, raspberries, um, sweet potatoes, peas, carrots, squash, beets. I would just try to find little things like that that would be easy for her to chew with her gums since she didn't have any teeth. Once you peel them, you're just gonna quarter them like this, and then we're gonna boil them. So the other question I got a lot was, when did Sophia stop drinking her bottle and start with solid foods only? I started that at a year. So at one year, my doctor said that you can eat pretty much anything that we eat as adults. So we stopped all the purees and the bottle at 12 months and we just did regular food. And then she also had milk in a cup, a sippy cup or now a straw cup. So that's what we did. Um, and it seemed to work well for us. And then she started eating meals with us. So whatever I'd make for lunch or dinner, that's what Sophia would eat. Here's a good question that I got. When did Sophia stop midnight feeding? <clears throat> she was really good about sleeping through the night by about three or four months. So I didn't have to worry too much about that. Um, I kept her on the schedule that the pediatrician suggested and we were feeding her at different ages. You feed her every certain amount of hours that they recommend. And then that's all we did. And we basically sleep trained her by doing that. Um, so we, the, <clears throat> the other thing that I never did was I never fed her milk directly before bed. So she never depended on it to fall asleep. It was always like one hour before bed. And I really think that that helped her not need a bottle to fall asleep, but it's up to you and your baby and what you think. She also ate really well, so that helped too, um, and it's your call. Okay, so here are my potatoes. I'm gonna cover these with water, start them to boil, and I'm gonna answer more of your questions. Once it boils, you're going to put it on a simmer, cover it, and let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're soft. So my potatoes are boiling and I want to tell you guys that this video is sponsored by a game called June's Journey, which I love. It's a hidden objects game and I play it while I'm waiting for things to cook in the oven or cook on the stove top and it's just a great little break and a little me time. So nap time, I'm cooking for the family, but I also want a little fun time. And this is a mystery game. It's available on iOS and Android as well as desktop um, on Facebook and Amazon. So you can download it with this QR code here. You can also get it with the link in my description. And you uncover a lot of family secrets, which we know is interesting. It's like watching the housewives, but you get to play at your own pace and whenever you have free time. If you're like me and you enjoy puzzles, 
My favorite thing to do in June's journey is to find objects hidden in these beautiful, colorful scenes. It's so relaxing and, oh, where's that butterfly? Back of chair, got it. I also love the idea of organizing and decorating. And in June's journey, you can customize and remodel your mansion and garden island. I'm gonna buy this statue. Gonna be fancy. My garden is gonna look good. You can download June's journey for free by clicking the link below in my description or via this QR code on the screen. It's available on Android and iOS devices as well as through Facebook games. Okay, my potatoes are done. I'm gonna drain them. I'm gonna put them back in the pot. I'm gonna put the burner on low and cook them a little bit on low while I mash them before I add the eggs and the milk and everything just to kind of dry them out a little. You don't want any lumps because you're using a pastry bag for this recipe to make the potatoes glamorous and pretty. So you really gotta mash them fine. Um, if you have a food processor, that might be good or a ricer. I do not, so this is what I'm doing. So after a couple minutes, you remove the potatoes from the heat because they're dry enough, just one or two minutes. And then you just wanna make sure they're not too lumpy. And these will get smoother even as I mix in the milk and the cream. I'm using sour cream. You can use regular cream if you want, but there's something about sour cream that I absolutely love in mashed potatoes. This counts as your arm workout, so you can eat the potatoes and not feel guilty. Okay, now the secret to this recipe is you put in your butter, your cream, your salt and pepper. You also put in egg yolks. So that's kind of what keeps them together and keeps their nice glamorous shape. So I don't know, I got this on Amazon and I'm obsessed with it. It's this little egg separator. So if you need just yolks, you can do this. You pop the egg in here and the white comes out. So then you're just left with the yolk. So I'll put the egg whites in here. I can actually cook those up for my lunch and save the yolks for the recipe. And there's the egg yolk. So I'm gonna put that in a separate bowl. So one of the questions I got was, what do you do if your kid won't eat? Mine runs around the house and I still spoon feed him and he's one and a half. So my suggestion is that you make it a routine that you eat together at the table. I still have Sophia in a high chair and she's two and a half. She's not running around while she's eating because she would never eat. She would just be playing um, or watching TV or doing other things. So I definitely make mealtime a mealtime and we sit and we eat at the table and that really helps. We just make it a routine and then that's what she expects and that's what she knows. Um, so she's not, I don't have to worry about chasing after her to eat or she's not distracted by a TV or screen. I would suggest putting them in some kind of chair, even if they're not in a high chair anymore, just to make it special for them. Um, or they have stools now, the kids can stand at the table. If they're not a good sitter, they can still stand and get some energy out. So I kind of like that idea. I might get a stool like that for Sophia um, because that will be fun. And we have our table is actually counter height. So her sitting on a regular adult stool might be dangerous, but if she has a kid's stool where she can stand up, I think she would like that. Okay, there are my three egg yolks. Now we get to mix in everything in the mashed potatoes. Okay, so here's my milk. I'm doing whole milk, one fourth cup. Then I'm doing two tablespoons of butter, yum. For the sour cream, I'm gonna eyeball it. This is what I do. I take a big spoon and I just throw a dollop in. You want a healthy teaspoon of salt, for sure. And you're gonna wanna do about a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. I like fresh ground pepper, it tastes better, but you can use whatever pepper you have. This recipe also calls for a hint of nutmeg. So it's one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Makes it taste more festive. This recipe is perfect for the holidays if you wanna impress your guests. They're very pretty, look pretty on a nice holiday table. I'm gonna mix these ingredients first just to make sure the potatoes aren't too warm before I put in my egg yolk. Three egg yolk. So exciting. They're gonna be really rich. So fun and festive. Oh my gosh. Can you see these? I cannot wait to bake and try them. They're so beautiful. Cannot wait to eat these. Okay, 
Now you want to taste them just to make sure they're salted enough before you put them in their forms. Mm. Oh, these are perfect. Okay, I'm gonna do my pastry bag now. Now I'm gonna fill this pastry bag with mashed potatoes. You bake these in the oven at 400 and definitely line your baking sheet with parchment paper so they don't stick. I might have to fill this a couple times because I have a lot of potatoes here. Just wanna push it down a little bit. This recipe definitely makes a lot. So if you don't wanna make as many potatoes, you can just cut it in half. Um, but if you're serving a lot of people or have a really hungry family like me, it's a good amount. And you can reheat them so easily. Just pop them in the oven or toaster oven to heat them up again. I am using a star tip. I should have done this before, <laughs> but I got distracted. I am using a star tip, the large star tip. Um, you can put it on like so. Now is the fun part. So here, I'm just gonna do one right here for you. So you can see. Here it comes. You wanna make a little circle. There we go. Okay, I need work on my uh <laughs> need work on my piping. Hmm, could be better. Okay. So someone also asked me, how do you get a 13-month-old to like eggs or to eat eggs? And with that, I would just say don't put so much pressure on one food. If they don't like something, that's okay. And just keep offering it. And maybe eventually they will like it. Um, for me, I didn't put so much pressure on Sophia. If she didn't want something one time, she might want it the next time. Um, but there's really no reason that they need to eat eggs if they don't like them or they're not eating them. Try other foods. Um, you can also try to make the eggs different ways. So... What I would do is try a hard boiled egg or try a scrambled egg and see if they like them different ways or with different seasonings. Sometimes if you put things with it, I always put avocado um, with Sophia's eggs and she loves that combination. So really, you can even try an egg sandwich, but some people just don't like eggs. I mean, Guy Fieri does not like eggs. It's okay. Okay, these could be prettier, but you get the idea. And it could be really fun to do with kids. You could make different shapes. I like that there's no rules about this. You can just make them any size you want, any shape you want. I mean, I'm doing the traditional way, um, but they're really pretty. Maybe mine aren't as pretty as some, but it's kind of fun and new and different. And once they bake, they'll look more uniform. Okay, also pro tip, if you don't think you did a good job, just kind of pipe over it again. Just do another layer and boom, see? That looks a lot prettier. So you can fill in some spots where you missed too. I'm gonna feed these to Sophia for dinner. Right now it's nap time. And I told her that I was gonna make them during your nap time. I don't know about you, but I really, of cooking as a way to just do something where I'm focused on it and it gets my mind off things. Let's see if I can tap this a little bit better. <laughs> okay, guess not. It's not my day. Okay, that one looks good. One of you asked me if I was a picky eater or if I got sick when I was pregnant with Sophia. So actually, no, I did not get sick with Sophia at all. Um, and I am not a picky eater, but I was pickier when I was younger as far as like trying new foods or different foods. Now that I live in New York, I'm definitely more adventurous. And my husband opened my eyes to a lot of foods too that I didn't have growing up. 
but growing up I was definitely, I was eating what my grandmother made us for dinner. Um, but I was also, you know, the pizza, the mac and cheese, the chicken fingers. I liked all those things. So yeah, I definitely wasn't as good of an eater as Sophia is. I think a lot of it, to be honest, like not to put pressure on yourselves, a lot of it is genetics. My husband is such a great eater. My stepdaughter was also a very good eater, very healthy, very adventurous. And I think that that helps. So if your child is not eating anything and everything that you give them, it's totally normal. Um, but some kids just eat more than others. Okay, I'm getting better with my second round here. Definitely getting better with my second round. That looks much prettier, wouldn't you say? Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of these and then I'm gonna put them in the fridge to let them set. Okay, so while those are in the fridge, you wanna get an egg wash ready. So you just beat one egg. You can add a little water to it as well so it thins it out, easier to brush on. Or you can melt too. Um, but you just wanna beat the egg. I'm gonna add a little water and then we're gonna brush it on the potatoes. Just got these out of the fridge. I put them in the fridge for about 20 minutes. And then you just brush the egg wash on. My oven is preheated to 400. So I'm gonna pop them in the oven for about 20 minutes once I do the egg wash. Um, another question I got from you guys is, you have to do this gently, by the way. Um, another question I got from you guys was, how did I get Sophia to start doing more solid foods and wean off bottle? So, I don't know if this is recommended, but what I did is I gave her her drink, like other than water, I gave her her milk after she ate so she could have water while she ate, but then I wouldn't give her a bottle or a sippy cup of milk until she was done eating. And I think, or, or during dessert, which is mostly fruit for her, I think that was the best thing I did for her because then she got full on the food and not just full on the milk because what happens when she drinks a lot of milk is she doesn't want to eat her food and I understand that. I don't want to eat a lot of food after I drink milk either. So this is probably, this is probably okay for us because she did eat really well but if you try this and your kid isn't eating the food you gotta give them the milk because they need some formula milk or nutrition um, from the formula or milk. So I would say, you know, try that. Don't give them milk first and see if they eat more. Um, and then, you know, the other thing you can do is just keep giving them, this is what I did. I kept giving Sophia some purees while I was giving her the solid foods to try to wean her off of them. Um, or I would give them after she tried the finger foods. So I would always do solids first. I would give her a little bit of peas and carrots or some salmon, some chicken, whatever she was eating and put them on her tray on a plate or bowl. And then she would try to eat those first because she was hungry and she would try to grab them, try to eat those. And then I would give her a little bit of pureed, maybe pureed fruit or vegetables after that, just to make sure she was getting enough because sometimes she wasn't getting enough if she couldn't grab the food as easily. Um, and eventually she was able to grab the food and get full on the solids. So yeah, I did kind of a hybrid until she was better at eating on her own. Oops. And let me see if I can fix that one. Or just take it off. That is why you need to put these in the fridge because Otherwise, they might smush really easily on you and fall apart. You want them to keep their shape, if you have a pretty shape. <laughs> Some of mine are looking a little better than others, but that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna finish washing these up, put them in the oven for 20 minutes, and hopefully they get golden brown and beautiful, and we'll see how they come out. More importantly, we'll see if Sophia likes them. Okay, just took my potatoes out of the oven. They look nice and brown. Hopefully they are soft on the inside, nice and creamy. And Sophia's gonna try some, so let's see if she likes them. It's too beige. You wanna cut it? 
Too big. Okay, cut it. It's too big. Use your knife. Cut it. Watch your hand. What do you think? Yeah. What's your review? Much shrimp. Uh -huh. You want some shrimp? Okay. What's that? Okay, I'll get you some shrimp. Would you like some broccoli too? No broccoli. Shrimp? Well, eat your shrimp and then I can give you some more. You see the pasta? You see the pasta? You want lobster ravioli? Okay. No Parmesan cheese. Mama got more Parmesan cheese. Mama got more Parmesan cheese, yes. I'm not eating the knife. You're not eating the knife, yes, good. Don't eat the knife. Where's my coasters? Where's my coasters? I don't know, where did you put my coasters? No, they broke me. Oh, did you break them? Big them. Mm. Big them. Oh no. You broke them? Yeah, I'll break them. Oh my goodness. Are you sorry? No, they're yellow. Yeah, they're yellow. Do you like I yellow? Orange. Do you like yellow potatoes? Orange. You like orange potatoes? We like orange potatoes. Oh, uh, we made different potatoes today. It's cut it. Cut. Cut the buggy. Let me cut the buggy. Okay. Cut, cut, cut. Then we get break it. Hang, 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 hang out. No, bunky, bunky, bunky. Where's your key? We cut it off. This video is sponsored by Jean's Journey. It's an iOS and Android game. You can download it here using this QR code, or you can look in the link in my description.